I went from getting only six and a half hours of sleep a night to over eight hours of sleep every single night by sharing with you what I have been doing in this video. Sleep is one of the most important parts of maintaining and having a high vibration. It's one of the most important parts of releasing the energy, the stress that we have from our day. And unless we are getting deep sleep at night, we'll find that we may be more anxious, we may feel more depressed, we may have more lower vibrational emotions that are stuck in the body because we are not releasing them, we are not allowing ourselves to really wind down and get into those deeper layers of the subconscious. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process I use to have amazing sleep at night. And more recently, the things I've been infusing into my sleep that have completely transformed uh, the level of deep sleep that I've been having. And I'm gonna share with you that in this video. Now, first off, let me just preface this by saying that the reason I've been so focused on my sleep lately is because about a month ago, I went through a breakup. And when I went through that breakup, what one of the first things that happened is my sleep started to decrease in the amount of sleep I could have. Um, it was me processing emotions, I believe. It was also interesting because I, have, I wear this thing called a whoop. And basically what this thing does is it tracks my sleep. It tracks my uh, calories burned. It tracks my recovery, all those things. And one of the things that happened is on the whoop, it literally shows for the month and for like every week, how much sleep I'm getting. And leading up to the breakup, because it was kind of a shocking breakup in a way, it came out of nowhere. Um, what happened is one day I was at, you know, like seven and a half hours of sleep, eight hours of sleep, seven and a half hours of sleep, seven hours, 20 minutes of sleep. And then the day of the breakup, it went down to like six hours, five and a half hours, six hours, six and a half hours, five hours, six hours. It was like that for like two weeks. And, uh, I was like super, you know, wanting to focus on my sleep. And the funny thing was, is the more I would get resistant and be mad that I wasn't sleeping good, the more that, and the more pressure I put on myself to sleep good, the more my sleep would decline. But the more I let go and the more I relaxed and that I didn't make it so important for me to get eight hours of sleep a night, the easier it was to sleep, ironically enough. Now, the things I'm gonna share with you though is my exact protocol. Um, and I'll tell you the things that have made the biggest amount of difference. Now, the first thing is when you are sleeping good at night, one of the most important things that you can do that's gonna sound counterintuitive but does make a huge difference with your sleep is when you get up in the morning, within the first couple hours, get that of sunlight, sunlight. Get your skin absorbing the sun. I do this every single morning. I post it on my Instagram. <laughs> you probably see the photos there. Every single morning I post it just as a form of accountability. By the way, if you wanna start doing this, tag me and we'll all be in that sun accountability together. Tag me at Aaron Dowdy 44 and I'll be reposting those on my story also. Um, but just in general, the reason you do this is because when you wake up in the morning and you go and you put your skin in the sun and you also like, I, I don't stare at the sun, but I let, allow the sunlight to absorb into my eyes is what that does is that actually one, it makes your body more alert Two, it increases the cortisol, which is actually uh, which is like the stress hormone. But what that does is it allows you to peak and to release more of that when you wake up and that guarantees that 16 hours later, you're then gonna release the most amount of melatonin. Melatonin is what helps you sleep at night. So what I found is by getting up in the morning and going out into the sun, I sleep extraordinarily deeper at night. This makes a huge difference. So uh, when you wake up in the morning, some of you are gonna say, oh, well, I have to work night shifts or what if it's cloudy, I live in the Pacific Northwest. Well, my answer to that is move out of the Pacific Northwest. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although it's not a bad idea. I couldn't imagine it being cloudy so often and just every, all the time it's cloudy and there's hardly any sun. Um, sun, you know, the skin is an organ of our body that absorbs energy. And I think we've been conditioned to believe the sun is actually really bad when I, I think that the sun is really good in many different ways. So one of the first things you can do to really get an amazing sleep is when you get up in the morning, get in the sun, um, I take my shirt off, 
and that's what I do. And I just absorb the most amount of sun and I just sit there and I absorb it for about, be about 10, 15 minutes. I really enjoy it. Um, if it's not sunny, I will use something called red light therapy. Red light therapy is, um, a certain bandwidth frequency of light. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, there's also more expensive ones you can get that are like really wazoo and everything. But just in general, if it's cloudy out, I will use my red light therapy. And that is something that uh, I can use as substitution. But nothing beats the sun. You can look at all these biohacking things that I share with you, uh, but nothing really beats just the sun. It's all natural stuff. Like you can buy things that you put on your bed that put your bed at the, the frequency of the earth so you sleep good, or you just go outside and crown yourself in the freaking earth. <laughs> so uh, there's different, everything normally comes down to like the most natural bare things. You want to think of everything I'm sharing with you too uh, throughout this video. A lot of it's very natural things. Like it's, it's natural things that we did back hundreds of, or thousands of years ago. And if we just get back to the basics, we'll get amazing sleep. One of the other benefits of doing the sunlight thing in the morning is that as you are absorbing the sun, what you're doing is you're kind of priming your t the, the day to where that's what time your body gets used to waking up at. It like wakes up your body way faster. So one of the other main things I, I strongly recommend, it wasn't even on this list, but it should have been, is go to bed at the same time every night. If you can, I know some of you have work schedules, but when you go to bed at the same time every night, you then will naturally kind of wake up at a similar time because you'll get a similar amount of sleep. But that's also having consistent amount of time of when you go to bed every night, you'll just naturally get tired at the time and it's just extremely beneficial. Your body likes consistency. So um, when you are doing that, it, it just, it, it makes it so much easier for you to fall asleep in the future, like every, every night as you go. So, uh, the next thing that I do that helps me get amazing sleep is I black out my room. Now, blacking out my room to a level that seems kind of psycho, to be honest with you, um, when I look at this and other friends come into my house, I live in this beautiful house that has this amazing million dollar view where you just like can see off into the hills and shit. But I don't even, can't even look out my windows because I have an aluminum foiled my windows. <laughs> I used, some of you might say, well, just use blackout curtains. I do use blackout curtains. The thing is, is blackout curtains don't really touch out all the light. So what I do, because if it's, if the moonlight is out at night, there's light coming through. Um, even when you have blackout drapes, there will be light that is able to get through, uh, like the cracks and stuff. So what I do is I'm aluminum foiled, literally every single window in my master bedroom. And, uh, also that means that I had to like put this thing around my, my, uh, what do you call it? My fireplace. So I have this like thing that goes around my fireplace because I had a, I have a double sided fireplace that goes from the living room and then also to my master bedroom. And one thing I had to do is I had to have a handyman come over and like black that out because otherwise there'd be huge amounts of light coming through. So I do that. I also get black tape and I put it over any light. So like the fire, the fire hydro or what do you call it? The fire thing that thing that knows if there's a fire going, um, uh, detectors, the fire detectors. I put a, a black thing, a tape over the light that blinks. Um, I have like an alarm system in the house for some reason that's inside the, that was already in the house. That's kind of like in the master bedroom. So I, I taped that, I got black tape going over it and it looks kind of psycho. I'm not going to lie about how intense I go. Like right now I'm showing the house because I'm going to be renting out this house and I'm going to be traveling. And one of the things uh, that I have to explain to every single real estate agent that comes in is like, I know it's a little bit psycho, but this is what I, the, you know, once they rent the house, they're going to have this amazing view. Um, so blacking out your room, the benefits of that are you just sleep so much deeper at night when you do this. Uh, I have friends that kind of questioned it and then they did it. And every single one of them that does it is like, yeah, wow, I never knew. And by the way, like th these aren't just things. It's like where I'm getting better sleep and you take our word for it. There's also like this whoop thing tracks the sleep. It tracks the, it, it, it tracks the deep sleep, the amount of hours of deep sleep, the amount of hours of REM sleep. It'll tell you, show you like exactly how much sleep you're getting. And you can tell once I added in blackout to my room, I got deeper sleep, more of it. I slept longer, less occurrences of waking up. So awareness is key for this. So it's something I highly recommend is checking that out. 
Uh, if you haven't already and you want to try this for free, it's called a Whoop. Go to AaronDowdy.com slash Whoop, W-H-O-O-P, or click the link below. Check this out. You get a free month to see it, to experience it, and to see if you like it. And if you click the link below, I'm going to personally gift you one of these for free. Just try it out. So um, blocking out my room has been a game changer. Uh, think about like back in the day, we were probably like in caves and shit. And you go into a cave and it's like dark. And then you go to bed with the sun and you go to bed when the sun goes down. And then like you go to bed and then you wake up with the sun. You're in these natural rhythms back in the day, you know, and now we live in these boxes with fluorescent lights and all these things. So one hugely beneficial thing for deep sleep is to actually black out your room and to sleep as dark as possible. Now, even though I do that, here's some of the other intensity it gets to. I black out my room and I wear a thing over my eyes, like a blackout. You might say like, why don't you just get a blackout thing that goes around your eyes? Uh, because light still gets into the room and it still, your, your skin is still absorbing it. So I do all this, that, that blackout stuff. And I put the thing around my eyes, uh, like a, an eye cover as well. So eye cover blackout, you know, blackout drapes and the aluminum foil. And another thing I do is I wear and I put earplugs in my ears. Earplugs in my ears makes it so, uh, I just use these, what are they called? Heroes or something, uh, they're, I think they're like earplugs that are normally, they're very soft so they don't hurt. I've had ones that work really, really well where you can't hear anything, but like if you sleep on it wrong, it really hurts your, uh, your ears. You wanna know what I used to do back in the day? I used to use these things, these little gems that I found that are like really smooth, and I found them at this crystal and rock show, and they're made as like earplugs. They're not made as earplugs, but like you can use them as earplugs. And I would wear these in my ears and they were stones. And then I would sleep on it wrong and it would really hurt. And I remember after, I did that for like a year or two. And I'm like, why am I doing this? This is so not good in case I sleep on it wrong. But now I just use these little things called like, they're, they're for gun, I think for people that go to shooting ranges and stuff, but they're so soft. Uh, they go in my ear and it cuts out most of the sound so that I don't hear if there was construction or something closer by, I wouldn't hear it. And that is a game changer as well, putting in those earplugs. Uh, so that's also been a game changer. So that's one of the things. Now, the next thing is uh, here is an addition to my sleep, okay? This is a new addition that has made a huge difference in my life, and I believe when I went from six and a half hours, six hours a night to nine, nine almost nine hours, eight hours, 15 minutes more sleep than I've ever had, here's one thing that I think had the most difference. That was grounding myself in the earth before I go to bed, within half an hour. So this is something I used to do when I used to live in Vegas because there weren't much, there wasn't a lot of nature in Vegas. It was like the backyards were really deserty. So one thing I used to do in Vegas is every single night I would drive 10 to 15 minutes away just to go to a park. And that park I would go to had grass. And what I would do is I would walk barefoot on the grass. I'd have a little towel that would lay on the towel in the grass and have my feet touching the, you know, the grass and I would walk around. Sometimes to a point to where the, the sprinklers would turn on while I'm laying, getting ready for bed at night, f driving 15 minutes away to do this. But that was how important it used to be. And I would do that every night. And then I would drive back home. And then I would like wind down and go to bed within like, you know, 30 minutes. And I used to do that all the time. And I forgot about it. But recently what I did is I thought about this when I was having that bad sleep after the breakup. So what I did is I started going outside and I would just put my feet on the ground for like five minutes and I would just like, just stand out there or I would like sit down with my feet on the, the bare foot on the earth and I would do that. And the night after I did this, I had so much more sleep, I couldn't believe it. And they do sell things. I actually have them somewhere, but I, I haven't been using them. There's like these things, these frequency, they have blankets that you can buy and they also have these little like magnets that you can put under your bed that put the frequency of your bed to that of the earth. But um, I haven't been using those. I think that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on this stuff. You can literally just ground yourself. It's probably free for you to go outside and just put your feet on the ground. And uh, you can ground yourself before bed and watch how much deeper your sleep is. So that's something else that I do. Um, now, 
another addition to my sleep that has made a huge difference. This is huge because I was finding it was very hard for me to fall asleep, um, especially my mind would be going because one, it was like thinking about like the shock of the whole breakup and everything that went down. Um, another thing though was like, sometimes I would study like business books because I love business and I would get into like different things I would learn about my business and it make my mind go. And the challenge with that is that then my mind starts racing. And I start getting excited. And then it was like, I'm trying to sleep, but I'm thinking of these new business ideas and stuff. Now, one thing that's been a game changer is actually reading fiction, which normally isn't my cup of tea. I like nonfiction. I like learning. But at nighttime, before bed, what I do is I wear blue blockers. Blue blockers are these little, uh, like, orange e like, they block out all blue light. There's little glasses that you wear. I wear those glasses, and then I do read on my iPad. But when I read on my iPad, I'd use it on dark mode, and then I, I use my blue blockers. And that really helps. And they're, they're really intense blue blockers. So sometimes it's actually hard to read because they're so, they work so well. Um, like, they block out so much blue light. But what I do is... I read, and what I read is Harry Potter, because <laughs> I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd, um, but also it's like very fantasy. I never read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which is like the newer book that was like, kind of like a script, so I'm reading that right now, which is actually really cool, because I'm getting like, like new Harry Potter fix, but by reading fiction, it's almost like I'm getting more into my subconscious mind. I'm like, my mind is relaxing because it doesn't relate as much to that as much as like uh, in the same type of way as much as business books that like is very applicable to my reality. So what I do is I read fiction as I'm going to bed and my dreams are more magical. Uh, it's easier for me to like when I start reading, I start getting really tired. So also I'm like priming myself for like this amazing sleep. And that's something that just made a game changer is reading fiction 30 minutes before bed, I read for like 20, 30 minutes at least before I go to bed, and I'm reading fiction now. And it's really helped me have better, deeper sleep, more vivid dreams for sure, better dreams. And another thing that helped me, I remember when I was having trouble sleeping, was I would like try to force myself to sleep. Now I don't have to force myself to sleep, it just kind of nat happens naturally. But one thing I remember doing is when I was close my eyes, I'd put the awareness in my body, I do like a form of yoga nidra where I'm like feeling the awareness of my feet, my hands and my legs and my bringing the awareness to my body. But then what I would do is I would imagine a hummingbird, a white cloud in a blue sky. I would imagine a green, like green, luscious trees with wind blowing through it and leaves glistening. I would imagine that of branches kind of swaying in the wind. I would imagine these things, and as I would imagine them, my mind would start to slow down, and it was like I was going into the dream state by using visualization. So the cool thing is about when reading fiction books, the benefit that I'm finding is it's kind of use, it's, it's kind of like spiking my imagination and making it easier for me to fall into that like visualization sleep mode. So that's something that helps. Um, it's also kind of like a hypnosis technique of like, if you're trying to sleep is go more into like visualizing different dreams or different fantasy realities. Or, um, sometimes what I do is like my manifestation practice, I guess you could say is I feel it as I'm falling asleep. I feel what I want to create in my life. And I feel as if I am that version of me. So I would, uh, before I was on YouTube, I'd imagine myself making YouTube videos. I imagine myself in my daily routine, what that would be like, what kind of books would I read? How would I interact with other people? What other YouTubers would I collaborate with? These are all things I would focus on. And as I would focus on these things, what would end up happening is it would like evoke an emotion in my heart. And then I would sink into that emotion as I'm falling asleep. Because here's the thing, as you're falling asleep at night, you are drifting from the theta state. You're drifting from the alpha state, the beta state to alpha state to theta state. And theta state's where you influence your subconscious mind. So a lot of sleeping is like priming yourself to like more easily move from that of the beta to alpha to theta. And I believe that by grounding ourselves, we're like kind of releasing energy throughout the day and we're allowed to kind of reset ourselves to the where then it's easier for us to shift into these deeper states of consciousness. So 
that's something as well that's made like a huge difference is doing that of um, like even just feeling the amount of the energy as I'm going to sleep, but visualizing and using that really stretching my imagination in a way has helped me bridge more into that. So uh, another thing that I do is, is at night as well with the blue blockers is, oh, this is a huge game changing realization. I'm not sure which one's made more of a difference. Is it the grounding myself or is it this thing I'm about to share with you? The thing that I believe has also made a huge difference where I literally am like nodding off while I'm reading because of this is at night, turn off almost all the light in your house two hours before bed, not just an hour before bed, but two hours before bed, turn off all the lights in your house. And then what I do is I buy these like red light things and these red light things are like uh, these little lights that I got on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And they're just little lamps that go around the house in different corners. And I turn those on and I turn off all the other lights. And then I wear blue blockers two hours before bed. And then I go around and I'll still sometimes watch TV, watch Netflix, watch whatever. And as I'm watching that or watching YouTube or whatever, I'm wearing the blue blockers, but it's also dim in the room. I don't have the lights on in the room. It's just the TV and then my blue blockers and I'm just kind of relaxing. And uh, this has been a huge game changer because normally I have lights on all around my room. Sometimes I'm even just like walk, walking without, walking on my treadmill desk, watching YouTube without my blue blockers on and then going to bed 20, 30 minutes later. That was, that was so bad. I don't know why I used to do that. That was why it was probably, I wasn't getting as deep sleep. But a huge game changer is to turn off the lights in your house. Just use red light if you need any lights or Himalayan salt lamps. I've got like Himalayan salt lamps all around my house. I've got like probably eight of them. And Himalayan salt lamps are like an orange hue, more reddish orange hue than a blue hue. And that's the key is like blue. Think about it. Blue light tells your body that it's like noon. So it's like if you have blue light and fluorescent lights everywhere, it's telling your body it's noon, it's noon, it's noon, and then you're trying to go to sleep. It's kind of hard. But if instead you wear the blue blocker, so you're blocking out the blue light, you turn off the lights all throughout your house, you have just a little bit of light enough to see, and if you're watching television or watching something on your phone or whatever, you wear blue blockers. Makes a huge game changer. This was a absolute game changer when I began to put it into my routine. So that's another one. Now another one I'll share that's kind of weird is um, when I was going through the breakup about a month ago, one of the things I did was this. I was getting so frustrated, and I think there was a lot of anger because of kind of what happened, and there was anger that I had um, that was inside of my body that I, had to, I felt like I needed to release. And I was getting angry that I couldn't sleep. So I was laying in bed. I was mad I couldn't sleep. This was wrecking my sleep. It was, like, frustrating for me. So one thing I did is... Uh, like five in the morning after three hours. Because what I do is I go to bed for an hour, then I wake up for three hours, then I finally go to bed for another four hours. Is But it's like laying there for three, four hours is miserable. And I was trying to force myself to sleep using Yoga Nidra. But one thing that helped one night is I went into my living room and got out of bed. They say if you have trouble sleeping, get out of bed because otherwise you start to associate your bed with not sleeping. So what I did is I got out of bed. I went to my living room. And I actually released, I was like screaming, yelling, releasing anger that was in my body. So I was releasing stored energy in my body. And I did that and I was doing it and I could feel the energy leaving my body. And sometimes energy comes up for us to express it. You know, there was times during the breakup where I, would, I felt very sad and I would cry. And in the past, I would never cry after a breakup. I'd be like, oh, it's okay. It's fine, and I would, like, suppress it. Now what I found is that releasing the energy through modalities like breath work or through different modalities where if I just feel it, I express it. And as I express it, it feel, I felt, like, so much more free afterwards. Then after that, I ended up sleeping good that night. But in general, um, letting yourself feel the emotion that comes up as it comes up has been a key, like, like game changer and breath work is something, if you haven't done it yet, I highly recommend. Something that we do inside my monthly academy called Magnetic Mastery is we do breath work every month or two. And breath work is just, 
it's uh, the most powerful breath work I've ever found is what I got certified in. And that's something that I do every single month in the, you know, every month or every month and a half, two months. Um, and it's just so powerful. You want to check that out, by the way, you go to www.magneticmastery.com and you can check out that of the monthly membership. It's uh, live calls pretty much every week, coaching calls plus breath work once every month or two. And it's just a way of releasing that energy to elevate your vibration to a completely new level. Um, now, another thing that I'll share, these are some things I've learned from a guy named Andrew Huberman. He's a, he's Dr. Andrew Huberman, or he's like a scientist, or is he a scientist? I forget, but he, he's a, a, he's like a Harvard or Stanford uh, scientist that's been on Joe Rogan many times, and he, a lot of, some of the stuff is stuff that he also recommends doing. One of them, though, is uh, taking a hot shower before bed. Um, I felt energetically that taking a hot shower before bed also clears your energy field, clears your energy field. And, um, actually my grandpa told me this a long time ago. He was like a very esoteric guy before he passed away. Um, he was into like the, you know, like Edgar Casey back in the eighties. I remember seeing those books around the house. It's so weird. I remember when I was like six years old, no, maybe eight years old, going to my grandpa and grandma's house who they'd have the, he'd had these Edgar Casey books laying around the house. And I remember that. And I was like eight years old. And then it was like 10 years, 20 years later that I learned about Edgar Casey. Anyways, side point. But um, I remember him, he would talk about auras and all these interesting things. And for an 80 year old, you know, he was like 80 years old when he passed away, uh, 80 something. And it was, he was into the esoteric stuff. But I remember him telling me that. And I always kind of remembered it. So what I would do is uh, at night, that's a time of like really clearing your energy field. And I do that with taking a hot shower. Now, like a, a year ago, some, I read, I think I heard Sadhguru say something about cold showers before bed. And that seems so counterintuitive to me. And I did that for a while, but it never really worked that well. Like it's, so, it's supposed to do something, your body temperature. And like it actually, you're, you have to heat up your body temperature for it to like heat your body up from a cold shower. I found that not to be true in Andrew Huberman. Who are we going to trust, the enlightened guy or <laughs> that's like the, it's like the, the religion versus the scientist. Um, and I'm just being totally joking about that, by the way. Uh, but they're both different trains of thought. I'm sure both work depending on your belief system or just what works for you trying it out. But the uh, thing that I believe Andrew Huberman says is more about a hot shower at night and that that's beneficial. And I found that that works for me. Although I do love Sadhguru, so I'm not talking smack or anything. Um, however, that is something that uh, a hot shower at night, about half an hour before bed, it's also just a primer. A lot of these things we do, they're just ways of priming your body before sleep. So taking a hot shower before bed um, clears energy field, also kind of like relaxes the body. I think that's beneficial, relaxing the body as well. Um, so that's something that helps too. Now, something else, uh, people that come into my house know, because even right now it's, my house is at 68 degrees, kind of cold. I get it. Um, I, my body runs hot. I'm a mesomorph <laughs> in like the different body types. And I just, I run hot. I'm run, like fire, very fiery. So, um, I sleep at 67 to 69 degrees is what Andrew Huberman and a lot of other biohackers recommend. I found that to be true uh, because deep sleep is also related to, to body temperature. You get the deepest amount of REMS when like, it's affected your body temperature in a certain way. So um, I sleep at 68 degrees. I do not use crap load of blankets. I, I use just enough to where my body is a little bit colder. Um, and the nice thing about the houses that I normally get is I normally get a house where there's like a separate AC unit just for the master bedroom. So I can have my master bedroom at like 66, 68 degrees. And then the rest of the house could be at 70, 75 degrees. I know not, maybe not everyone can like, you know, has the, the luxury of having a different AC thermometer on their, just their master bedroom. But if I had a house, I would put the whole house at 70 degrees. I know that might cost a little bit more AC wise, but that's made a huge difference as well is lowering the temperature in my master bedroom um, or in my house in general has allowed me to have much deeper sleep at night. So that's something that I recommend as well. Um, and, uh, they say 65, 69 is a sweet spot. However, 
I think you just test it. Everything I'm sharing with you, by the way, I recommend you test it. And we'll talk a little bit more about how I recommend you to like apply this, apply everything I'm sharing um, in a little bit, but just in general, temperature makes a huge difference. Now, another one also made a huge difference is taking magnesium within an hour of sleep. Um, I've heard from many other people as well that take magnesium before bed that it works like magic. Uh, I'd use something called Calm, Calm gummies, get it out of Whole Foods. I use these gummies. They do have a little bit of sugar in it. Um, not a lot, but like, I find that I, I just enjoy the calm gummies. I take four calm gummies before bed. Also they have, uh, like the powder that doesn't have nearly as much sugar in it that you could take as well. It has almost no calories in it and that you take into a little bit of liquid. Uh, you drink that before bed, like hat within a half an hour of sleep. That is a game changer. Most people are deficient in magnesium. So when you take magnesium, it just relaxes your body in a specific way and, it's just awesome. <laughs> I highly recommend taking magnesium before bed and you don't have to take calm. You could take any brand. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, so I'm just like sharing the brand, but in general, uh, the, the taking the magnesium before bed is also, once again, it's another primer. When you're taking magnesium before bed, you are priming yourself for something that's going to help you like get into the state of sleep. So that's another thing that I do. What was something else? Oh, here's another game changer. This is, I haven't even, I can't believe I, this has only been one day of me practicing this, but I, I've done it before and it does work. Um, normally I drink, I would drink crap loads of water before bed and then I'd have to get up and pee in the middle of the night and then it'd be like sometimes harder for me to go back to sleep. So what I did last night worked and I'm going to continue to do it. So what I do is I drink a lot of water eventually after an hour after dinner so that I'm not like drinking a whole bunch of water with my dinner necessarily because then it kind of goes against digestion. But what I do is I drink a whole bunch of water and then an hour, like two hours before bed, zero water. I'm already hydrated. Some people even take, I know, electrolytes before bed so that they hold on to the excess water so that they don't pee it out. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that tonight. I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> um, but in general, drinking water two hours before bed and then cutting it off completely will help so that when you go to bed, you're going to pee a couple times before the two hours before you sleep. And then try to go right before you get into bed. And then when you go into bed, I slept seven and a half hours last night all the way through. Felt rested when I woke up. I feel rested today. feel great. And a lot of that was because... I didn't have to wake up halfway through the night and then try to go back to bed. So not drinking crap loads of water before bed, but still being hydrated because you drink water like, you know, an hour before bed or two hours before bed and you, you still have water in your system could be very beneficial. Something else that maybe to try could be that of what I mentioned as well with that of um, uh, salt, electrolytes. Maybe we'll give that a go and we'll see how that goes. And... Uh, that's something that can make a big difference. Now, beyond this, something else, I, I meditate every night. I stare at a candle flame. I bring the awareness into my body. I feel the separation. It's called the frame technique between me and the candle. Um, that helps me to feel safe in my body. Uh, also, just obser observation will help you more than anything. Observe how you feel. Observe what you're thinking. That was a game changer back in 2012 when I learned it. And even to this day, if I'm like becoming aware of how I feel, becoming aware of the energy in my body as I'm falling asleep at night. Um, not something you have to really think about, but it's just observing. Realizing you might think thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. And doing that 10 minutes before I go to bed with the candle flame and then I go get in bed, I pee and then I go to bed. I've been doing that for years. And it's a way of just recentering your mind. And then when I wake up in the morning, I do the same thing, by the way. I get up, I meditate, Staring at the candle, I take a cold shower, then I go stand in the sun. And this has been a, like, you know, everything I'm sharing with you are things that I've learned. The two biggest things, though, that I've learned recently is grounding myself in the ground before bed and then um, for like five minutes, and then also turning off all the lights in my house two hours before bed, and then also not drinking water within two hours of bed. That's made a huge difference. And for when it comes to your vibration, understand that. What, you know, what is your diet like? I realize when I eat crappy foods, 
you know, I'll either be gassy or like that'll go into like my digestion. The gut is very much connected to your emotions, you know? So if you're eating, mo you're, if you're eating food that's irritating your gut and, and inflammatory, it's not good. So one thing that I recommend is get your, get your health in check. Become aware of the food you're putting into your body. Personally, I eat whole foods, very simple ingredients. I do eat meat. I eat like grass-fed bison. I eat fish. I eat food and like high quality protein. And then I eat like whole foods, foods like, um, you know, like potatoes. I do eat carbs. So I eat potatoes. I personally, I don't need to go into my whole diet right now, but just in general, simple ingredients, not a whole bunch of processed foods like pastas and stuff. Um, but I found that that to be very beneficial because my body gets used to digesting it and then I sleep better. Um, the way that I recommend, I think it's very important that the way that you apply anything I'm sharing with you is just whatever resonates with you, try it for you. I do recommend you get a tracker or something that you can track and then to see what is working best for you. You can also just kind of like become aware of the time you're going to bed every night and how much sleep you got. Um, but awareness is key. Don't try to add all of these all at once. Because if you try to add all of these all at once, it's going to be a lot and it's going to feel like this thing you have to do. I'd recommend maybe just like, you know, once you black out your room, it's like you don't really have to do anything extra. So it's kind of like, that's easy, right? Um, go to bed at the same time every night. That's something that you, you get used to as you do it. A lot of this stuff becomes autopilot. And as you do it every day, it becomes easier and easier. But I recommend you try or what you do is you intend to just figure out like what resonates the most with you, try it, apply it in your life, leave what doesn't work, but understand that um, your sleep is one of the most important elements that go into your life, your emotional well-being, your mental well-being. And when you get good, like I know that when I get good sleep, I am a literally a different person. But when I go on very light sleep or crappy sleep, I am also a very different person, but not necessarily in the most positive ways. So these are things that worked for me. Uh, there is a video right here that will show you the frame technique, which is what I was sharing with you a minute ago. It's something that if you do every day will completely change your energy, completely help you like understand how to feel safe in your body so that you get deeper sleep. Watch this video right here. We're going to actually do this together in this video. We're going to do this little activation exercise that